We're pretty, everybody's pretty narrowed down here. I got a couple minutes too, I think, but we're going to get started. It's good to see everybody here this afternoon. Um, our monthly scripture is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. Philippians 4, 4. Uh, the youth fundraiser went well this past week. Uh, they, they sold out. I don't know if everybody got, got actually hard food, but they sold out of everything that they had. I told them, I said, I'll do the planning for the food next time because we'll have plenty. Uh, but uh, then, then they'll lose money, you know, because they'll have leftovers. But anyway, it was a, it was a success. I think they're going to do one next month. They have a junior senior trip, a junior senior trip coming up um, around Christmas, and um, so we're looking forward to that. The um, baby shower for Miss Laura McCarthy is the twenty fourth. Uh, more details follow us at three thirty. It's at three thirty, and um, everybody come. There she is. Everybody come. Whenever we have something, we have something for our men or for our women. For, Baby showers, whatever. People come. You know, every, everybody should come. All of these, we all need to support each other, whatever we do. Um, and, and listen, I know the guys don't have nothing, but if, 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 uh, if we all support each other and everything that we do here at the church, it's a success. And everybody wants to be supported, you know, so please come if you can. Um, on the homecoming is, a, is the 31st. The uh, Gills will be here singing that morning. Looking forward to that. Um, um, the kids and youth will have practice every Sunday at 5 p.m., the kids and the youth, for Christmas on the hill. So keep that in your prayers. Um, trunk or treat is next Wednesday night. I was told to ask you guys, we need 10 more people to be involved in trunk or treat. Not one, 10. We have 20. That's a good number. We have 20. But uh, we'd like a lot. You know, we'd like a lot of things in cars and trunks so kids can go from one to the other because... Really, whenever they go to one and, and get their candy or cookies or whatever, you know, well, some of us are setting up games. I'm going to have a BB gun shoot. If you're going to you know, do something, get a chance to put in your eye out. That's why I say. So we'll have a BB gun shoot back there in the back. Um, so looking forward to those things. Uh, there'll be a few other games going on. There'll be a hayride um, for all that. But we'd like 30 cars set up for trunk or, or trucks, if you can do a truck, for trunk or treat. So uh, look on different different ones. Ours is... 
Ours is Cookie Monster. So if you want to do Cookie Monster, have at it. But we're going to do Cookie Monster. We're going to give away cookies. I thought we'd do Ronald McDonald, give away cheeseburgers. Amen. Wouldn't that be good? Give away Big Mac. Oof. Amen. But uh, if you can, if you'd like to, if you haven't signed up to do, do one, please try to. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll hit you hard and try to shame you Sunday when we get here to end of doing that as well. So um, thank you all. Thank you for the ones that's already signed up. There's a lot of people involved. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? The boys have a camp out this Friday. Um, all the little boys will be at Johnny's up there camping. And it's like the greatest camp out in the history of the world because they're at the park up there, the county line farm. So they play and they do all this stuff and they sweat and they go to bed stinking. You know, they're not the age where y'all send deodorant with them yet, you know, the little guys. You know, it, it, it's like sixth graders and down, and sixth graders are a group on to their, all to their own, you know. But uh, it's all the little guys. All their tents are sandy. Listen, last year, it was hilarious. Last year I went over there, and, and little boys was flying in and out of one tent. I said, hey, hey, y'all getting sand in that tent. They looked at me like, who cares? They were sand all in the bottom of the tent. Colby, Colby was sitting in the bottom of one tent. He done opened a whole box of fudge rounds and was eating them. He was eating them like, like you open up a can of a pack of Oreos. He was eating them fudge around like Oreos. I said, go, Colby. But back here tonight, old Colby said, he, he, he gets in line first. He got his plate and sat down, and he ate all his food. <laughs> he said, he looked all dejected. He said, brother, I don't think I got enough to eat. I said, well, I think you might need to go through the line again. He cleaned up real good, so it, it looked like he had eaten. And so he went through the line, got his new knife and fork and all that stuff, like he hadn't eaten, went through the line again. Hey, he's awesome. He's awesome. But uh, they'll be camping. So if y'all want to see a show, stop by there. Send your boys. Send them out there. Let them camp. Let them have a big time. Um, several of them are staying too late and going home, I think. But they're, they're, they're staying till in the morning. So uh, they will be nice and filthy and dirty and uh, ready for a bath when y'all pick them up. Amen. Um, any other announcements? What about prayer requests? I found out. I talked to Mr. John Thomas. I was checking on John Wayne Spratt, and he broke his leg. John Wayne did his, his uh, that is, femur, femur broke his, broke it, broke it, had a picture of it, he's got all bandaged up, so y'all, y'all pray for John Wayne, and, um, several ones, I got Joel Chapman, I think, uh, the Cindy Tatum family now, if I'm not mistaken, um, did I get a name right, I put down Ferris Tatum, is that a right name, Ferris somebody, who was that? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Eldon, Miss Kathy Mixon, uh, little Gentry, um, Rocky and Lisa Kersey's grandson, six months old, having heart surgery Friday. So y'all keep them in your prayers. Uh, Claire McMillan from Coach. Uh, coach Bill Pitt, uh, retired coach from Charlton County and several other counties. Um, getting better. Did you see Zach's post today? It seemed like he was doing doing a little better. Ready to leave. Ready to leave the hospital. So he's, he's ahead of schedule. Had a stroke. One of our coaches. And um, Mr. Jack and Miss Rita Howe. Keep them in your prayers. Um, I saw that. Pete Spradley. Any of them? Ready? And my cousin Dana Carroll. Yes, missionaries in Haiti. Missionaries in Haiti said that they um, kidnapped twelve or fourteen? Seventeen. And with children, five children in that group. Um Any others? Yes, sir. My cousin Jim Vaughn passed away with Jim Vaughn. Jim Vaughn family. Um, Miss Kara Chester, she was on our prayer. She's been on my prayer list personally for 
three, better part of three months now uh, or longer. Her husband, we lost her husband, Joe Chester, to COVID. She was in the hospital, and they waited for his burial for a couple of weeks, thinking that they was going to bury them both at the same time. She's in rehab now, um, sending texts. So she's got, she's got to learn to walk again. But um, So keep her in your prayers. She may be watching tonight. Um, so keep her in your prayers, and uh, as she as she learns to do a lot of things over, the Lord's been gracious in the midst of all this. Any others? And who else? Paul House. Man. You know, there's a shot you can get for that, right? We so turn fifty. Everybody know that? Okay, I'm just saying it. Because you hadn't ever had them. If you have, you'll hunt a shot. Any other? Jerry Baker and Brandon Baker. Any others? Any unspoken? Amen. And let's remember each other. Uh, remember the, the young people in our community, the school stuff coming towards Christmas, and remember our government. Let's pray for Israel, um, everything that's going on in and around the Middle East over there today, and um, pray for our country that we continue to stand behind Israel and uh, we continue to stand behind godly things. There's a lot going on in our country that's wrong, but God is still in control, still in charge, and we are still free Americans, and I believe we still live in the greatest country on the face of the earth. And uh, and having said that, we should do our best to take care of it. Yes, sir. I knew that Levi did. The baby? The new baby? A month old, five weeks old, six weeks old? Any other? Do they live, do they live over here by their daddy? Yep. Okay. Any others? Well, amen. Let's pray for our prayer request tonight, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this evening, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We thank you, God, that you look our way and you tell us to bring our cares and cast them on you tonight. So, God, we lift up these prayer requests for those that need us. God, we so many people have called us this week and left prayer requests and um, their Lord is not near as many as there was a few months ago, and we're just so thankful, God, that COVID seems to be backing away now. And pray, Lord, that um, it'll continue to just vanish. I, I hope that we don't have any more issues with it. Pray that next year we won't have this problem again. Pray, Lord, that you'll bless those that we're praying for and those that have had cancers. I, I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing Miss Pam Sinclair. God, just continue to, to guide her and, and give her good days. Thank you, God, for her healing. And uh, just pray for her days that are ahead as she goes through radiation. Just thank you, Lord, for the lives of other people in our church that you've healed, that you've taken care of, Lord, and uh, been beside. We, we lift up Miss Kara Chesser, God, as she continues to go through um, therapy to learn to walk again and learn to do a lot of things again. Pray you'll bless her and her boys. And just pray, God, for all those that need our prayers. And, Lord, those with COVID now and, Lord, those that, um, that have lost loved ones in the past week, God, we just lift those up to you, knowing, God, that you care for us and that you love us, and you, you worry about us, and you tell us to cast our cares on you. So, God, that's what we do now. We lift those up and give them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bibles with me. We're going to jump off in Daniel chapter 6, and I'll show you what I mean by jump off in just a few minutes. I'd like to start a little series on Wednesday night. I like to, I like to head in a direction instead of uh, picking topics and doing topical things. I like to head in a direction. I'd like to preach a series of Wednesday nights maybe through the end of the year, um, entitled Being uh, or Becoming Oak Strong. Now, this is Oak Hill Baptist Church, and we've had the, uh, uh, somebody made a T-shirt, or we saw it on a, on a slogan called Oak Strong on the back of something, or somebody was making one I saw a couple months ago. I want to think that, that Miss uh, Heather Heyman made that up or, or said it to me. But anyway, I think that's a good slogan for us, Oak Strong, Oak Strong. But the idea behind that is, is, is learning how to be more like Christ. You say, well, Brother Ray, you preach on that all the time. Yeah, but listen, let's, let's be honest about ourselves. Let's, let's take a good look at different issues that we deal with in life. We, listen, one night we might talk about finances, about how we take care of our, our finances and how that honors God. We might talk about how we, how we uh, take care of our mental 
uh, capacity, how we go and pray for other people, and how, how we need time to rest in our, rest our minds and to stop and pray and time to, time to recoup. But listen, those are things that we want to talk about over the next eight to ten weeks, different things. The goal is, is for uh, your sanctification process to, to grow, not to wane, but to grow. You know what the word sanctification means? It means a, it means a positive change. You know, uh, when a person gets saved, when a person gets saved, they're justified. That's, you know, there's a justification, sanctification, a glorification. Justification is when a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's an event. It happens when they get saved. Boom, they're justified. And then starts their lifelong process of getting more like Jesus. It's called sanctification. But, but ideally, it means positive change. It means constantly getting more like Christ every day. Some days you don't, some days you back up. But as a whole, you ought to be, look at, look, be able to look at your life over a one-year or five-year, maybe even a ten-year period to where you don't fall for the things you fell for. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? You know, that maybe, maybe we don't react to things. What, listen, one thing that, that I've, I've, I've struggled with my whole Christian life is my reaction to things. You know, anybody else? Because I feel like I feel like I'm justified if I yak back, you know? Anybody else? If they like yak at me, I'm yakking back. I mean, that's just, that's just you know, Lord, help me. I, I, I want to, there's things that I'm trying to control. And so over the past couple of years, I've, tr- I've tried to, uh, my, my temper, my tongue, because, you know, I think pretty quick sometimes, and, 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 and that, that, that just comes out, and I have to be careful, because that don't glorify God. I mean, we can, listen, we can laugh, but listen, I don't look like Jesus. So, so my, my idea of being more like Christ should grow. I want to be, I want to be more like him. There's some things I ought to be doing in my life every day, and that's something we're going to talk about uh, as well. I think repetition, uh, listen, I think repetition um, breeds success. I believe if you do some things over and over and over, you learn. You learn. I remember, I remember I had a group of uh, 3 to 11-year-olds. The first ministry I was ever involved with was children's church. When I first got saved, 3 to 11-year-olds. We had 50 3 to 11-year-olds. I got to run the church vans. I called all my buddies and uh, their wives and asked if I could pick all their kids up. I was 24 years old. That's if I could pick all their kids up. So we had all these kids that were, you know, some of them I was holding all the way to church. They was little fellas. Well, we took them. And I can remember uh, trying to get those little fellas raised up in church, getting more like Jesus. But the, the idea behind that was, was, to, was to grow them into something, was to, was to watch them grow, was to, was to see them to get to a place where they, they was getting more like Christ five years from now. Now, listen, that's been a... Uh, See, I've been saved 29, 1992. I've been saved 29 years. And some of those kids now are, are, are in their 40s. Listen, some of those teenagers are in their 40s. Some of those little guys are just are, are, are in their early 30s. It was little kids at the time. Some of them ain't in church anymore, but some of them are. And listen, every now and then I'll pass a teenager that'll say, Brother Ray, you remember when you used to ask us those questions about so-and-so? And what I do is I, I teach them about um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, try, I wanted to put something in their little hearts and their minds. They could always remember, always remember history about the church or where, where it started, where Jesus came from. But I had a hundred questions I asked about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, and, and they would answer them. But we'd do it every week and I'd build on it. We'd ask the same questions. And they'd get so excited, able to answer those questions. The reason I said that is to say, is to say this. Two years ago, I ran into a girl. Listen, she, she, she's had a rough life, to say the least. That was 25 years ago. So now she's 35. She listen. She done been to jail, done been in and out. Had had rough days. Saw her up town one day. I think it was at a festival. We talked a few minutes, and and uh, she said, "You remember those questions you used to ask us?" I said, "Yeah." Do you know how far it is from from Ur to Haran? She said, 500 miles." You know. I said, "How about from Haran down there to Canaan?" Look, 700. You know, and those are little things, though you remember. Ideally, but right, I don't lead anybody to Jesus. Oh, no, no, it's Bible. It's Bible stuff. It's things they learn, things they grow. How are we growing? How are we growing? What are we doing in our life to make ourselves more like Jesus today than we were yesterday? Is there a plan? Is there something? Or are we just coming to church as part of our social life? 
What is it? Do we really believe that God, the creator of everything, expects us to be like his son? Do we believe that? If we do, you ought to be doing some things to do it, to be right. I think we ought to, be, I think we ought to set some goals in our lives. I think we ought to set some things up. Listen, we're going to talk about our giving, not just our money, but ourselves, our talents to the church, how we relate to other people. Over the next 10 weeks, that's my goal. But tonight we're going to jump off here in, in, in chapter 6 of Daniel and uh, just read a few verses, talk about it, and talk about how Daniel grew. This is, this is later in Daniel's life. This is, a, this is a time where Daniel's on past some things. Uh, he's grown up. He's seen a lot of stuff. And he's been pushed around. He's been pawed at. Listen, he's been taken out of his homeland and brought down to, to, uh, to, to the, to, um, oh, just left me. Um, somebody help me out. To the land of, uh, in the captivity by the, uh, it just left me. My mind's gone completely blank. Babylonia. He's been taken uh, captives in Babylonia. All these things have happened in his life. But here he is all these years later, still doing some things no matter what else happened around him. Still doing the same things over and over. So let's look at chapter 6. In verse 1 through about verse um, 7, 8, talks about how they tried to, they wanted to pass a law saying if anybody prayed to any other God or done any made any promises or, or lifted their voice up to any other gods than the Babylonian gods or the kings, that they ought to be thrown in prison, basically. So here we have verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing. They wanted the king to sign the writing. They didn't like Daniel, the other princes. The Bible says here in verse 1, they were, they were several, all the 120 of the princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. So they didn't like Daniel. They didn't want that guy in their crowd. He was that Christian guy that all of them didn't like. The Bible talks about how the Christians will be persecuted. Listen, and just because they went through persecution in those days, and we can read about it today, listen, please understand something. Persecution is coming again. Persecution is coming again for the Christian church. Well, I thought I, it, it, it was like a bell ringing, brother, uh, whenever I heard about the, uh, the people in Haiti being taken uh, captive. It, it was like a bell went off. I said, we're being persecuted. Listen, they're us. Those people that were taking their missionaries, listen, that's part of our family. That's our people down there being taken. And it's not something that's just happened in Haiti. It happens all the time. It happens in Mexico. I stopped going down there with kids 15 years ago because we had a group of men follow us around, and we just got come out with, back across the border, and they stopped. But listen, it, it's, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Uh, but here they were. They wanted Daniel persecuted. They wanted him put to death and thrown in the lion's den. Verse 8 says, Now, O king, establish the decree, sign the writing, that it be not changed. They knew, they knew that if the king signed it, then whatever he said would not change. That he couldn't change it, he couldn't back on it, back up on it. It was law. That it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Verse 9, Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Verse 10, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house and his windows being opened uh, in its chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed, gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. What did he have to be thankful for? He was a prisoner. He'd been a prisoner in his foreign land for so many years. He was thankful for his life. He was thankful that this was all temporary. He was thankful that the God that created everything was looking his way and had blessed him in the midst of all that he went through. There's a good lesson for us to learn, how God blesses us through what we go through in life. He may not take the, the pain from us, but he can be with us through the pain and through the things we have to deal with in our lifetimes. Pain's coming. Issues in life's going to come. But we, listen, we have a well to draw from through our Heavenly Father. So we have here Daniel uh, doing just what he always did. The Bible says he went, got on his knees, and prayed. Not just once. And listen, and he didn't pray with the doors and the windows drawn. You ever, you ever been ashamed to pray in front of folks? You ever, you ever been worried that people might see your face? Listen, don't, don't be ashamed to pray in public. Don't be ashamed to, 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 listen, to lift up God's name before you eat in a restaurant or, or, or walk away from somebody telling something, an ugly joke or saying something bad about somebody. Listen, be careful about what you do. Don't, don't be ashamed to be a Christian. You'd be surprised how many people... Um, are proud to know that somebody stands up. We was working yesterday on top of a prison, and one of my guys 
is, uh, is a Christian, Caleb. He's a Christian, good, good young man. Been with me seven or eight years. And uh, he's on top. I wasn't up there. They was up there putting a unit on, the, on top of the prison. I was downstairs running a tractor. And uh, they was up there about an hour, and he got down and come off. And one of the inmates came over to him. He said, hey, I had known this inmate. I know his inmate because I've seen him several times down in Okeechobee, Florida. He said, uh, a boy there goes to church, don't he? That's what he said to me. He's a big fella. He said, he goes to church, don't he? I said, he does go to church. He said, I can tell. I said, how can you tell? He don't talk good. I said, is that the only thing you can tell? He said, no, nah, you can tell. You can tell. What, what do people tell about you? You know, I left there thinking about that, and, and I didn't tell Caleb, uh, because to him it don't matter one way or the other. He's just who he is. He's, he's, he's God's child. But what do people say about us? What do other people say about you and your walk with Christ? Listen, that, that ought to be a big deal to you. People say sometimes, I don't matter what other people think of us. It does matter. It does matter. Listen, the Bible says in Acts that God's people were well thought of by the community that they lived in. And, and, and so should we. Listen, we, 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 ought, we ought not to buckle down to the community and get involved in everything they do just to, just to get along. We have to make a stand sometimes. It's not very popular. But when it's all said and done, people need to look our way and know that we stand by the book. And we live by the book. Now, in Daniel's time here, it says that he, he opened the windows and he prayed so that every person could see. If, if, if you wanted to see, do you think he knew what they were up to? Oh, yeah. He knew it was going to cost him. You know, if you read along here, you'll find out that he wound up being, was thrown in the, in the lion's den. And, and, you know, Darius came down and we find out he was taken out. And God protected him, though. You see, but you think about Daniel's life as a whole up to that point. He had seen so many things, handwriting on the wall. He'd seen so many things, fiery furnace. All these things he'd seen in his lifetime brought him to this point. Listen, I wonder if he left the meeting with the other 120 princes when, they, when Darius wrote in the law that decree that if anybody prayed to any other that they'd be thrown in the lines. I wonder if he had second thoughts on the way back to his house. I bet he didn't. I bet he thought, it's about time to pray. I know the boy's going to try to kill me. I wonder, you know, what would it take for us to quit? What would it take for us? What would it take for us to stop serving? What would it take for us a, a little bit of bullying or a little bit of this? Listen, in our country today, things like that make me worry. The biblical word for a positive change, we said it earlier, is sanctification, a positive change. What in our life needs to change? Daniel had went through some things in his life that probably got him to this place. We know as a boy, when he was brought in to Babylonia, he, or to Babylon, he, he was to the place, even at a young age, that he was solid. And he continued to grow throughout his life. He began to become more and more sanctified throughout his life. How is it with your life? Are we looking more and more like Christ? Does our life change? Do we set goals for ourselves? Okay, today I'm not going to say anything ugly. That'd be a good goal, wouldn't it? Today I'm, going to, today I'm going to do my best. Or today I'm not going to write anything negative on Facebook. How about that? Uh, I'm not even going to like it. You know, today, today I'm going to do my best. Today I'm going to mention Jesus to somebody today. What if, what if you set a goal for yourself to mention somebody, mention to, to somebody about Jesus today? Young man here in your church, anybody see the video of Tucker? Little Tucker uh, Enos, that's awesome. Uh, the teacher started a video, and he's talking to his, his classmates. He stood up in the back, and he's talking to his classmates. And he said, he said, I'd just like to, all of you to invite all of you to come to Oak Hill Baptist Church. And they said, yay, and he sat down. He's inviting everybody to his church. See, the little guy is setting a standard of who he is at a young age. And I'm going to tell you, they're going to hold him accountable to that. They should. They should. Listen, he's got to be that now. What about us? You know, when I think about things like that and I see those things, what about us? Lord, what, what, what am I holding myself accountable to in my life? Could I do what Daniel did? Could I have stood in the midst of all that and followed you no matter what happened? You ever been in a situation like that? You ever been in a spot to where you had to stop and go, ah, am I going to follow Christ? And it could be something small. It could be something real small. You know, yesterday when that guy mentioned to me, about Caleb being a Christian, I'd been around him two other times. He never mentioned to me that I was. So, so I got on the way home, I thought, 
I wonder what about my character he didn't recognize that I was a Christian. Hey, that's what I got from it. You know, so, so listen, there may be some things I need to work on in my own life. Can people tell whose we are by seeing what we are and what we, how we react to things? Let me read this to you. The biblical word for positive change is sanctification. If essentially, to be sanctified means to be holy. No one can attain perfect, perfect sanctification in this life, but every Christian should be moving toward higher levels of consecration. How about this? Maturity. How about this? And commitment. Maturity and commitment. We ought to be working towards higher levels of that. We'll be working towards things where we look and say, God, I, I want to be better than I was last year. Lord, there was times that, yeah, I just I decided not to go to Sunday school. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a time in your life where you can decide, I'm going to go to Sunday school. I'm going to be faithful to Sunday school. Listen, we've been, we've been toying with the idea of starting another service. Somebody said, why y'all get together three times a week? We can't get together for four, that's why. I know some churches aren't having church on different times or whatever. Listen, that's their business. That ain't our business. I'm not for it or against it. What I'm saying is, I want us to be able to learn God's Word. Everybody can't always come in the morning. Some people work, so we have to have church in the evenings. Listen, I know there were some churches that have church on Thursday night. Praise the Lord for them. The Church of God church has church on Thursday night. And I asked a buddy of mine, I said, why y'all do it on Thursday night? He said, I don't know, it's just always been that way. I said, won't y'all do it on Wednesday night with the rest of us? He said, can't. I said, why? He said, that's the Baptist night. <laughs> yeah. I said, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. He said, we just always do it on Thursday night. It's funny how we tie ourselves to things, though, isn't it? What are we doing, though, in our own lives to set some markers so that we can see that we're better? You know, you ever, you ever, you ever went to the river and been camping, and you, you drove a little stob in the ground because you wanted to measure how far the tide was going out and coming in. It had, we had, it had rained up river from us when we was camping one night, so I put a stob in the ground. I was going to see how fast the river was coming up. So I went to bed, got the next morning, couldn't see the stob. It was time to go. It was time to go. Uh, and we left. But listen, we, we put markers in the ground to see where we are and how we're doing sometimes. Guy poured concrete at the house last week. First thing he did, he, you know, he used a screed board, but he put a little marker in the concrete in different places so he'd run that board, he'd know just a bit at the top of that little piece of wood sticking up in that concrete. That was his marker. That told him where he needed to be. What kind of markers are you doing in your life? Are, are, you, are you checking? I mean, sanctification, are you getting more mature? Are you getting more like Christ? Every believer, listen to this, every believer is personally, listen to me, is personally responsible to grow in their own sanctification or in their positive change. That's your responsibility. He said, well, I, that preacher was different. That preacher was different. He, hey, listen, by and large, it has nothing to do with me. It's your responsibility. He said, well, my Sunday school teacher, it's your responsibility. And mamas and daddies, we have a big responsibility in the lives of our children to help them grow. I, I, I tell mine all the time, Em, you, listen, there's some things you need to do. That's the wrong attitude. You need to make sure. Listen, we, we're responsible for them little fellas. How much are we doing? What are we doing? Further, believers are to encourage and exhort one another to grow in grace. That's one of the things we're going to get to. You know, one thing that um, I want to enter into this kind of is it, it comes, this idea comes from um, some counseling sessions. It comes from a, a book that teaches about different counseling ideas and things that people get involved with. And we're going to, we're going to morph that into some preaching and teaching. But the idea is that we, is that we all look out for each other, that we exhort one another. It is that we, that we come behind somebody and say, hey, how you doing? Uh, I, I noticed you've been missing Sunday school lately. How are you? I noticed you've, you've been missing our prayer times. And I noticed, I noticed you, you, know, you, don't, you, don't talk, you don't text me back uh, Bible verses like you used to. You know, how you doing? Got a little girl in school, college, uh, this past week, week, last week. Last week I went and visited over at Georgia Southern. She's having a hard time. One of our kids from folks is having a hard time. Separation from home, first time being off in school, not wanting to get out and go, <laughs> goes to class, comes and gets in a room. No, 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 go out, go out and see people, go do stuff. Go. Listen, get out of this room. And listen, in the midst of all that, she, she's not sleeping. She said, Brother Ray, I, I promise I, I, that, I, that I believe it, that there, there's something like, like demon possession or something's going on in this place. I'm just scared to death all the time. Listen, she's in that room by herself all the time. 
And listen, if you think the devil won't begin to work overtime in somebody's life, you know what ask you know what first question I ask was? Are you saved? Are you a Christian? She said, Yeah. I said, Oh, good. Then we can approach this from a different way. And I, I began to read her some verses. I read her Psalms 23. That, listen, that, that's not just for funerals. God is our shepherd. He takes care of us. He looks after us. And I begin to read, you know what I do? I send her verses a couple times a week. I send her Bible verses to study and work on a couple times a week. Listen, she's anchored to somebody else besides just herself. Parents love Jesus. It's, it's always funny that somebody else can tell you young and what to do better than parents can sometimes. Isn't that? Hey, Emma, man, listen, we can talk to Emma about her pigs that she does for show. We say, Emma, bless your heart. You can't. No, we, we don't know anything. Chad, Chad can tell her. That's the gospel. So we tell Chad to tell her stuff. Amen. Things to work out pretty good. But Lord, help us. So, so what, what I'm being in that little girl's life is just an extension of, of a friend encouraging her. What about us? Or, listen, that should be something we try to do as well. We should try to encourage each other. In the local church, each member, listen to me, is responsible to exercise Christian care and watchfulness over one another. We ought to be looking out for one another. If you see somebody not in church, check on them. Don't be ugly. Some people get plumb ugly, don't they? And I think it's, I think because they mad because they had to come to church. Don't people get like that? Well, I didn't see you at church. Well, you look like you enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah. How, how do we tell people how church was? How, how do we tell people? How do we tell people how we enjoy church? How was church? That was good. No, that's fine. I got on a plane one time and I worked in New York for Mister Gilman. And I flew back every week, back to, back to. Well, uh, I sat in seat one A. Mister Gilman helped. Uh, anyway, sat in seat one A. Little boy come by and uh, he he was upset because he was having to fly first time. He's about four years old, and he was sitting in first class, like, like seat three or something with his parents. He was showing out. And the plane hadn't left yet, and the little boy was showing out. And the, the captain came out, and he heard the little boy. He said, hey, I thought you could get on to the little boy. He said, hey, come here. I want to show you something. The little boy said, <laughs> and he went in there. And he went to the front where the cockpit was at. He stayed there the longest time. Come back out where the paired him wings. chest throwed out. Hey, he was a happy man. You couldn't tell him nothing then. He knew everything about planes and the gadgets and the stuff. Listen, you couldn't tell. He was excited, and he was trying to tell, tell everybody, everybody would listen. He'd say, hey, I got to go up front in that airplane. I got to see the man. I got to sit in that chair and that windshield, all them things. I'm going to fly this thing. And listen, he was excited. You ask that little boy what he seen that day, he was excited. How, how was, how was, our lives when we tell people about what we've seen and heard about Jesus. When we tell people what we've seen and heard our Savior do. You know, I, I, I can't wait. I tell people all the time what God's done for Miss Kara Chesser. I, you know, at time, it's been 15, 16 years now since God gave us Emma. But there was a time that I, I, I told everybody that would listen how God just showed up in the life of two people that for 14 years had prayed fervently for a child. We told everybody it would listen. Listen, God can do things. Listen, God can do things in a way that, that can make, that can shock us. And How are we doing to communicate that? That should be part of our lives. That should be, that should be what we do. Listen, I, I think, and this is my fault, I think we should have more testimony times where people talk about in church, maybe a couple on Sunday nights or Wednesday nights, but where people can testify about what God's done that week. So we can exhort one another and lift each other up. But we as a church, church members especially, we have a responsibility to each other. Lift each other up. Say, hey man, things are going well. How are you doing? How are you doing? I guarantee you some of us know if somebody's going through tough times, well, we can, we can help. Members strive, listen to this, members strive to promote grace, knowledge, holiness, and spirituality within the church. The author of Hebrews exhorts believers to consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. We ought to be trying to help each other to provoke them in a way they want to do good works. You know, for instance, if we need 10 more people to be in a trunk or treat, uh, challenge somebody. Challenge somebody to have a better one than you. You, you provoke them into good works. 
You know, I always like to hear uh, Johnny and Ethan and all these boys argue back and to about fishing and who's the best one and who can do this and who's the greatest fisherman in the history of the whole world. And, and uh, of course, that'd be Ethan Riggins if you ask him. And another time, Johnny would say it to him. They provoke one another, but it's in love, in Christian love. That's, that's how men do. And, and when you think about that, that's a sign of growth. It's a sign of growth. We can look in the lives of people now in, in, our, in, in church. I've been here, this is, this is my, about three and a half years now as pastor. But I can see people's lives have grown from the time we got here even through to today. They're, they're, they're growing in their sanctification process, meaning that their that um, positive change is happening in their lives, and they see it. They see it. People are more grounded in places and areas. They get more, they get more control of, of, of doing the same thing, just like Daniel did. Getting up on Sundays, coming to church, dressing your kids, beating that butt if you have to, and getting them down to God's house. You know, and, and, and knowing that you go home, take your break, get your rest, and we do have church on Sunday night. And people are involved on Wednesday night. But there's some things that we do, and can I tell you, you know why I do it? Because I want to honor God. It has less to do with, uh, with, with, with showing off or, or making sure you guys are happy with me personally. I want to honor God. I want when God looks my way, he sees somebody that's trying to be more and more like his son who died for him on the cross. Do you think about the price that's been paid for you? So you, got, so you have the, the right to go to heaven? See, Christ has paid your sin debt. Listen, no, no, that, that, that should change us. That should always change us. When you recognize that you're a Christian, then there's some things that ought to be different about you. Listen, over the next 10 weeks, I want to talk about those things. Th- those things. Consistency is one thing tonight. What did Daniel do? The same thing he'd been doing. The Bible says he went through the windows open, curtains drawn back, prayed towards Jerusalem. They knew where to stand. They knew he wasn't going to be in a prayer closet somewhere. They knew he wasn't going to be hiding in some, some cellar room praying. He'd going to be, listen, was it wrong to do it that way? No. But this is the way he'd been doing it. It wasn't right or wrong to do it that way. This is the way he'd been doing it. They prayed towards Jerusalem. That's a Jewish thing. They prayed towards Jerusalem. So he decided to continue to do it. Anything less than that would be less than what God wanted him to do. In your own life, let me ask you again, are you doing less than what God wants you to do? Has, has somewhere you backed off, it, it, it's somewhere you know that you, you're falling short and that you're not, you, the positive change isn't happening so much in your life as you'd like it to. Now look at different people in Scripture and, 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 the, and the disciples and all these people as they grew over the three years that they walked with Christ. Listen, some of them were hot-headed and they had chopped a dude's ear off. It was a rough crowd. But you find them in Acts, Romans, right on through Scripture. They were will, before long, they were willing to die. They were beginning to grow and get more and more. And it seemed like they, they did more when the Holy Spirit moved inside them and Jesus left. It seemed like they grew more when they had to do it on their own. You're responsible for your sanctification process. You're responsible. Listen, I, I have a burden to come and teach you and to bring you God's Word and make sure you know it, but, but ultimately, you're, you're responsible. Let me ask you some questions. I've taken too long with that. Let me ask you a couple questions. The primary goal of every believer can be boiled down to the following statement. Every believer should strive to reflect the glory, Jesus, uh, the glory of Jesus Christ by living obedient, holy, and submissive lives. Let me read that to you again. Maybe you want to write that down somewhere. The primary goal of every believer can be boiled down to this following statement. Every believer should strive to reflect and glorify Jesus Christ by living obedient, holy, and submissive lives. And how about this? No matter the situation. Ah, that was hard. That shot in the belly right there, boy. No matter the situation. You don't think that God knows you're going through tough days? Listen, you don't know God knows you're going through good days? Just as many people fall out of church when everything's going great. Listen, not everybody falls out of church when they go on hard times. I never understood that. People get on hard times and they go home. Listen, those are the times you need to be down at God's house. Those are the times you need to be down there with our other Christians and studying and praying and learning. I think there's a lot of people today that, that, have, that have short-circuited their, their spiritual blessings because they, they've, they've left God out of their, 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 their work and getting better and trying to get more like Christ. No matter the situation, every believer must strive to confirm to conform to the image of Christ. 
First question, are you submitting to God's will in this difficulty and attempting to see his purpose in it? What are we going through? What, what are you going through? Is there something in your life? I guarantee you there's something in everybody's life that they wish they could change a little bit. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be major. Maybe it's some, maybe it's some secret sin. Maybe it's some secret thing or, or something that you want different or you want changed, but it just doesn't seem like you can get a handle on it. Uh, Brother Ray, I want to be more faithful. Brother Ray, I want to be more of this. I want to get in touch with my finances. I want to make sure those are right. I want to make sure they glorify God. I want to make sure my health, my health glorifies God. I want to make sure the way I live and, and the way I carry myself glorifies God. Let me read that to you again. Are you, submit, are you submitting to God's will in this difficulty? Are you submitting to God's will and attempting to see his purpose? Do you think that you might be going through some hard times because God's trying to change you? That, that some of the hard times we go through is because God's trying to change us? Because that don't, that don't work anymore? You know, this is the way I've always done it. Well, that don't mean it's always been right. God just might finally be touching something in your life or an area of your life. God might be finally brought you to the place of maturity to where he's trying to show you some things. And you might be at that place now where it's time to grow. Some people get, some people get on church, they get on fire, boy, they get fired up for a while. But then, then they get to the place where, where God puts them down and says, all right, now it's time for you to walk. They don't want to walk. It's like a, like a baby, you've carried too much. I don't want to walk. I want you to carry me. I don't want to go through hard times. I want you to feed me. I want you to do it. We got our little show pigs. They happy in the pen. They don't like the whip. Craziest thing. You'd think they'd love it, eh? Emma wants to get them out and walk them. You know, she, she, first day she got out and tried to walk them in the field. I said, you can't walk them in the field first. Of course, I don't know anything. We always said that. I said, baby, walk them in the pen. The pen's 10 foot by 6 foot. Walk them in the pen. So I left. I snuck around the barn. I peeked around the barn. She's walking them in the pen. She knew I was right. Listen, but she, she started putting that whip on the pig in the pen, in, in, inside there. Started in little small increments, little small things. Next thing you know, that pig was walking in that pen, that 10 foot back and two, head up, walking high. About three or four days later, she could take him out of the pen just in, and lay just inside the barn. He'd walk back and two. Guess where she walked in today? In the field. He's a happy man. Listen, he, re- he had to grow to it. That's, that's us. Do you realize that God wants you to grow to some things? Listen, you might be in the whip stages. You might be in the stages now where God's trying to get you to some things. Maybe you're going through some difficulties because God's trying to get you to walk like him. There may be some areas of your life around that God wants to change. Secondly, is your goal in this difficulty God's glory? It, it, I'm sorry, is your goal in this to glorify God, or simply, uh, or you're simply, the goal in this is for you to get some relief or some happiness. A lot of times people, when they go through hard times, they just want relief. Oftentimes we need to ask God, God, what do you, what do you want to do? God, what are, you, what are you trying to change me into? Are you willing to submit to God's word as you try to find a solution to your problems? Are you willing to change your life in accordance to the teachings of God's word? There's a biggie right there. People are always, always willing to, they want the preacher to come and talk to them. I've talked to a young man now doing some, doing some counseling, and everything went well until I said, well, here, let me tell you what God's Word says about it. You know, people don't like to hear what God's Word says, thou shalt not. They don't like that. Well, well, that's for, well, well thou shalt not. People don't like to hear that. Well, can I tell you, we're going to spin wheels and spin wheels until we get to the place in our life where we recognize that God's Word's true. And we need to submit to what the book says. You, listen, there's, no, there's not going to be any happiness in your life until this Word is being obeyed. Until, until, until you're growing in maturity. Listen, God's trying to grow us. God's trying to grow us up just, just like Ms. M was trying to grow that pig. She can put it in a pig show eventually. God's trying to grow you to show you off to a world so other people can be saved and brought close to Christ because of the way you walk. That's what you are. You're a walking billboard. God's trying to get you to that spot where he can grow you. And sometimes getting you to that spot is painful. Sometimes getting you to that spot is painful. 
Are you honoring Christ by obeying him? Are you honoring Christ by obeying? There's a good word. Obeying. Are we honoring Christ by obeying? Tonight as we get ready to close, I think about Daniel and, 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 and his willingness to sit down and, and go in there and pray. Was he afraid? I don't know. Maybe. Probably so. It, we're always kind of afraid of the unknown. You know, what will they do or what can happen or what, what's the worst that could happen? But at the same time, he knew that his God would take care of him. And he had grown to a place where he trusted God. He trusted God because God had always been faithful. God had always did what he said he'd do. Listen, you're here tonight, and God's, God's trying to grow you. God's wanting to change you. God's trying to change you. What areas of your life can God change? What, what, what now? Are you impatient with people? Are you rude? <laughs> oh, you know what? How's your finances? Do, do you spend money where you shouldn't and then you can't pay your tithes to your creator? Uh, how's your attitude at work? Do people like you? Do you just go along to get along? Do you stand for the things? Listen, there may be some things that you can start doing now. I won't be a Christian starting tomorrow. I'm going to start tonight. You know, whatever that little small thing is, take a step. See a difference today over last year. You still got time. Still got a little over two and a half months for this year's over. About two and a half months. You got time for the end of this year to be better than you were last year. You got time. You just have to want to. Is it important to you for God to be happy with you? Is it important to you? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time together, for your goodness towards us. Lord, thank you that you teach us in your word that that we should be growing, that to be obedient to your word is something that should be normal in our lives. If we look at Daniel, Lord, as he, he grew and grew, and he, as he aged, God, he still did the things he was supposed to do. He didn't come up with an excuse. He didn't come up with a reason. He just simply did it. Help us, God, to mature. Help us, God, to strive for holiness. Help us, God, to strive to be like Jesus. When it's all said and done, Lord, our goal is to be like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like, like to come and pray, please do. Please stand. If you'd like to come pray, please do. Maybe not for the first time. You can drive something, drive a marker in the ground. Start testing the depth of the water. And look and see how far you can. Maybe you can start regular prayer regular Bible study, show up early something that you can look at five years from now, so that's where it started. This a thing. started. And your heart was open, ready for change. Oh, those days, you were never afraid to sing, never afraid to lift your hands, didn't care what people would You were on fire And church was more than a place And people were more than faces And Jesus was more than a name Remember when you weren't ashamed To tell your friends about your faith A time well, you close tonight um, be, be praying for the prayer request that we mentioned Also um, for all the things that are coming up. It's fitting to pick up speed, and it's going to be real busy. Uh, all the kids that are involved in plays and stuff for the little kids, be a prayer for those people that are teaching. And if you'd like to help or you'd like to find a spot to help, please let them know. I'm sure they'd love some help. Um, there's other places in church to, to fill in and get busy. And if you see um, our new Christian, Chuck McCook, uh, shout him on. Shout him on. Uh, brand new Christian. And uh, let him know we got some pictures they took this past Sunday. If you see some of you guys that work with him. Um, anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? If not, Brother Bond, would you dismiss us, please, sir?